Welcome to day two of our walk down memory lane. My name is Joy Mdivo and I'm so privileged and glad to be here today with you. Before we go any further, let us, let us pray. Thank you, Father, for your goodness this day. Your mercies that are new every morning, we do not take them for granted. And today as we sit at your feet and listen to your word, we want to pray that it's going to have an impact in our lives. We love you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. When Deliverance Church Umoja started in 1984, the Lord gave us a word, that, a prophetic word to operate on. And the scripture came from Zechariah 4, 6. And allow me to read it for you. Um, Zechariah 4, 6 and 7. For context, we'll read 6 and 7. Here we go. So he answered and said unto me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain, and he shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace, grace to it. So the operative scripture was Zechariah 4, 6. Not by might, nor by power, but by my, my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. This verse was our anchor verse, or is our anchor verse, as Deliverance Church Umoja. It's one of those um, scriptures that it doesn't matter the situation you find yourself, it is always ap applicable. Whether you are in a high, high, or in a low, low, it's a kind of scripture that will always speak to your life and to your mind. And today as we look at this scripture, I just want you to have a, an open heart to receive what God is saying today. One of the things that people think is a success to a good ministry is an excellent preacher. So we tick that box, we have Bishop JB and other excellent men and women of God who served under him. You may think it's a good location. You may think it is a foundation or a sponsor, somebody who would be able to pay your bills as you minister. You would think many other things, but we have discovered that the, script, the secret to a great ministry is when you allow God to be your everything and your all in all. Deliverance Church Umoja has been blessed through the years. And the secret to it is not an excellent bishop, is not a strong pastoral team. It is not even the hosts of people who volunteer and serve. It's not that we have a lot of money. It's not that we have a great location. It's that it's not by might, it's not by power, it's the spirit of God. The Holy Spirit of God is not just a helper, he's a comforter, but he's also a counselor. In our lives, there are many times when we would be tempted to lean on the arm of flesh and to forget that if we were able to do it by ourselves, then we would not need the Holy Spirit. As a ministry, as a deliverance church family, riding on this word time and time again has seen us, has seen God coming through for us. From when we were in the tent, You've had the famous stories of the tent, of it falling and rising and falling and rising. But those days were glorious days nonetheless. There were days when the family of God came together. Those who ministered and gave of themselves, brethren who opened their homes to keep the instruments, to um, maintain the, the tent, because after it would fall, it would be muddy. Women would give themselves to go and wash the tent. Those were days of selfless service. But be that as it may, if the Lord was not in it, if the Holy Spirit was not in it, it would have been completely useless. In my work with the Lord as well, there's one thing I have understood, is that when God has his finger on something, then success is inevitable. Deliverance Church Umoja, if we are honest with ourselves, we have done exemplary well with what God has given us. And yet there is more territory to conquer. Because as we celebrate 39 years, we look back and see 39 years and think it's such an awesome time. But compare this with Caleb, who got to 85 years and he was still saying, give me this mountain. In Umoja right now, the people who still do not know the Lord. In Umoja today, the people who've never even heard of the Lord. The people who will stop in the street and ask them to recite John 3:16, and they have no clue. There is more work to be done. 
Let us not be fooled by the big building, by the many campuses, by the opportunities that we see around us that show us that we might be a successful church. Not by might, not by power, not by our own spirit, not by our own spirit, but by the spirit of the Lord God of hosts. But there's a second part of that scripture that I read about Zerubbabel. What is this mountain that is before you? Oftentimes what discourages us from ministry is when we think that the task is so daunting, is so huge that sometimes it may not even be worth starting. Maybe God has placed it upon your heart to start a ministry for street children. Maybe God has put it upon your heart to join the choir or to join one of the other ministries. Maybe the ministry that is on your heart is not even part of what we have. You have a ministry maybe in poetry or in painting, in art. There's something that God has put on your heart and you think that it is too big a mountain. What is that mountain before you, Zerubbabel? The word of the Lord assured us that it shall become plain before us with shouts of grace. Why is this important? When we came to Umoja, around us, all around us, what you see, the buildings and the, the, the flats that are around us, there was nothing there. Let me paint a picture. When you came up from Karibangi South and you're on top of the, the bridge that goes over the railway, you could see the roof of Deliverance Church Umoja, a red roof building out in the horizon between where you were at Karibangi South and where we were at Deliverance Church Umoja was nothing but sisal fields. Yes, sisal fields was absolute nothing. On what we now call Church Drive, you had the PCA Church, you had the Catholic Church, the Houses for the Fathers and the, and the Sisters, and then Deliverance Church Umoja. Other than that, there was nothing. It looked like a place where where, where, who are we even preaching to? So when we were at the market, it made sense because there are people who are coming. But when Bishop says, let's go and build, and where we are going to build is nothing but sisal, it looked like a daunting, daunting task. But I'm sure you've had this testimony, not once, not twice, where the first service, when we moved to a new sanctuary, we had built a thousand-seater, thinking it's a huge, huge building. But in the first Sunday, it was filled to capacity. And that has been our testimony ever since. I don't know whether you are seeing the results of God, God working in your life. Sometimes it looks like he's not working, but I assure you that he is. But you need to understand something else. It says, the mountain shall become plain with shouts of grace, grace. We serve under a man of God, or we, we are sitting under the tutelage of a man of God who has broken the word faithfully through the years. Those who've been consistent in the Liberal Church of Moja, my friend Dan Kitaka likes saying, if you have listened to JB through the years, you have been to more than a Bible school because of how good a Bible teacher he has been. But the word of God has to find expression in your life. The grace that God has made abundant to us has to come through in your life. My challenge to you today, you may think it is your education. You may think it is your job. You may think it is your husband or your wife or your wonderful family. You may even think it is your president and your political party. But it's not by might. It's not by power. It's by the Spirit of God. And this is a word that's not only alive in Deliverance Church of Moja. It is a word that is available to you as a child of God. What is that mountain that you are facing? Remove Zerubbabel and put your name there. What is that mountain before you join Devo? It will be as a plain with shouts of grace. My exhortation to you today is fix your eyes on him. Once you understand your source, your power, your X factor is the spirit of God, then you learn to lean on him. This is a section where I ask you a very critical question. Have you been filled with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues? In this day and age, I know people make fun. You even see drama on TV and things like that. They make fun of people who are speaking in tongues. Masani mabakuli, mabakuli, masani, masani, mabakuli. That's what we used to say when we were kids, and we didn't know how to speak in tongues, but we want to participate. So when the parents are speaking in tongues, we will nasema ni masahani na mabakuli. But do you know there is an infilling with the Holy Spirit. There is the evidence of speaking with tongues. But more than that, there is the evidence of him at work in your life as your helper, as your leader, 
as your guide, as your superpower. Today, my exhortation to you would be this. If you have not yet received this wonderful gift that is the Holy Spirit, take time to find another believer who's maybe a bit more mature in the things of the faith than you. And just pray a simple, a very simple prayer. Here I am, Lord, fill me. I tell you, his word is true. Anyone who lacks wisdom, James says, let him ask me for it. Let's transfer that to the question at hand. Anyone who desires to be filled by the Holy Spirit, go ahead and just ask him. He's more than willing to do it for you. And today I want to just share my personal testimony. I have achieved many things in my life that people look at and say, Joy, you've done very well. But I'll tell you something, a little secret. You know, I'm not all that. In fact, I'm a very inept human being, very inept. In fact, I would rather, I would even go as far as saying, I'm completely lazy. I do not apply myself at all. But when the Holy Spirit comes upon me, I tell you, I find myself doing things I did not know that I could. I'm not a very morning person. I don't like getting up early in the morning. But I have found myself being taught the discipline of rising early by the Holy Spirit, no one else. I'm a person who likes enjoying my peace and quiet. But those who know me might say I'm very outgoing, not knowing that I have a very introverted side. It is the Holy Spirit who has schooled me on how to open my, my space up to people to approach and to come near me and to not push them away. The Holy Spirit has been a paracletos to me all along the way. And anything you see in joy that is worth saying you've done well, I assure you it has got nothing to do with me, but everything to do with the Holy Spirit. And what he has done for me, he can do for you as well. Do you need to excel in school? Do you need to excel in your business? Or your career needs to take um, an upward turn? I don't know what mountain you're facing today, but like Zerubbabel, it shall become like a plain with shouts of grace. So I want to encourage you. Zechariah 4, 6 and 7. It's not by might. It's not by power. It's by the Holy Spirit of God. And as we celebrate 39 years of Deliverance Church Umoja, as we look around and think about our beautiful buildings, our wonderful choir, our fantastic fellowship, and all the things that God has been doing among us, let's not get too comfy in what God is doing. Like I said before, let us not let the success of yesterday keep us from the next move of God because indeed there is more ground to conquer. I love you with the love of Christ and today allow me to pray with you a very special prayer. Jesus, when you left this earth, you told us you leave us your peace, but you also told us that you leave us your authority. More critically, you told us that you will send a helper. And now that Lord, we are here today, we know you have sent a helper, the Holy Spirit. As we pray today with my brothers and my sisters, especially those who are longing for the infilling of the Holy Spirit, I want to pray. By the mercy and the grace that is upon my life, dear Lord, you would extend an arm of mercy to my brothers and my sisters and fill them right where they are right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, fill them with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Fill them to overflowing. And Lord, it's not feeling for the sake of feeling good that now somebody can speak in tongues or somebody just has bragging rights. No. But allow us to be used by you to bring down any mountains that we have in our lives, any mountains in our families. There are those, dear Lord, are the key to unlocking the destiny in their families. Those who are the key to breaking generational curses. Those who are the key in breaking bondages in the lives of men and women. Those who will be great evangelists as being the first ones who are born again in their family. Give them the Holy Spirit that even as they minister, they will draw the rest of their family to you. Lord, there are those who are in countries where the gospel is not freely preached, O oh Father. But your Holy Spirit is a helper, a present help in time of need, who will teach them and will admonish them in the ways of the Lord. It's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by your Holy Spirit. And today, dear Lord, we submit ourselves to the leading and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done. Thank you, Lord, for all that you are doing. Thank you, Lord, for all that you're going to do. For it's in Jesus' name we do pray and believe. Amen and amen. Thank you so much. We'll see you tomorrow, God willing. <laughs>